Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've made numerous changes to RP2000 and I of course need to test them and already I think there will be more changes. For instance, I think that these ore contracts should probably wait until uh, we have the technology to unlock them uh, or to do them, sorry, uh, to do them. We have to make sure that they unlock when we have the technology to do them and the most important technology, of course, is drilling units, which are here. And I've decided that maybe the junior mining excavator should come earlier, like in an advanced exploration. So I'm just constantly thinking of things to move around. Somebody had mentioned that maybe the procedural wings are too far up the tech tree. Uh, they're here. So yeah, that needs to be fixed. They shouldn't be in advanced. I mean, they are pretty advanced, but you know, I think that they really should be at start. So I don't know what they're doing up there. So I'll try and fix that. But for now, what I want to do is see if we can get the first space station contract. Uh, so I'm gonna unlock space exploration, which is required for it. I know, I mean, otherwise you don't have any station modules. So yeah, we are going to research that. Uh, we are not going to unlock all the parts because that would be expensive. Got the simple capsules there. Okay. So yeah, we will see about that and we might actually have space stations. If we take a look at the contracts here, uh, the thing is this first space station one hasn't been popping up for me, nor does it show why it's not available. See these do, right? They have prerequisites and they say why, but then this one when I go to it, it does. it's very suspicious. Uh, there is a way to debug the contracts, by the way. And so we see that there are some errors in the contract group, but it's only this one, the space station rotation repeat. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a problem with the space station. In fact, it doesn't say that there's any unmet requirements or warnings. So why doesn't it show up? So yeah, uh, it's complicated stuff. But at the very least, we should be able to do a first docking, and that would be nice. Uh, but we really need to be able to do space stations here, and also I'll add contracts to do space stations elsewhere. But first, we need to make sure that the space station contract actually works. There's also a crude lunar flyby, and I would like to do that too. Which, I mean, it's ambitious, but you know, with the money that we're getting paid, uh, I think that's plenty enough money for anybody to do it. Uh, this is in hard mode, and it's not too risky. Uh, but the crude lunar landing should not be that cheap. So there's something wrong. No, uh, no. But then, then you've unlocked the technology. You've used the advance to unlock the technology that will make the lunar landing easier. So it should be fine. As far as my pricing scheme is concerned, the idea is that one of the funds is one thousand dollars in year two thousand dollars. So we're looking at this is like uh, maybe. Two three billion dollars now. Uh, this is maybe two billion dollars now, something like that. So I mean, it's not unreasonable or anything like that. Um, if people end up with extra money, that's great. They can use it to do more interesting things and not be too tied to the contracts. I think people would like to be able to establish bases all over the place without constantly having to worry about money, and that's fine. I mean, it's not meant to be uh, constraining. Let me put it that way. So I'm going to be picking up the crude lunar flyby and the first docking contract, and we'll see what we can do with those. This doesn't require people, so we can dock two probes together. And we're basically waiting for the Mars window where we will be able to launch some extra probes, but we might as well take advantage of the quickness, quickness with which we can do stuff in cislunar space. So let's do some of that. It is a good question, though, whether our existing pod can actually survive a return from the moon uh, right now. So we need to do an uncrewed test of that. And if it can't, we'll have to work on that. First thing we'll need to do is get much better power. And we'll have a much more robust service module. Yeah, unlock a better... RCS block, though still not as powerful as the ones on Apollo. And we're actually going to put it more closer to the center of mass. 
so that we can do things. Though it should be angled out. I think there is an angled out one, but that's a 400 newton one, not this is only a 100 newton one. So now we have extendable solar arrays, but they're really small still. We can tweak scale them though. That's not too bad, that's actually one kilowatt already. So maybe I don't need two, well I mean we would like maybe one kilowatt. Okay, so they're like these. Um, we could get those, but these are sort of better. I think we'll go with these and move them down a bit. Okay, but this is 25 tons. Now, we're overdoing it here. Um, we'll underutilize it for this mission. This would be if it's carrying a lander, too. You just need flyby kinds of fuel. So I want something that can toss maybe a 12.5 ton pod to the moon. I'd also like a real full docking port. So NASA docking system. But we'll tuck it in so it doesn't get in the way of the aero cap, right? 12 tons. Well, I think it's time to go for hydrolocks here. We're going to the moon and everything. And this is the Hydrolox engine par excellence for us. This uh, 2040V, it's got a huge nozzle and 10 ignitions and 361.4 kilonewtons of thrust. If only such a thing existed. <laughs> right. Uh, we'll need we'll need a bigger stage here. I still have to figure out how to get other tanks. That's a mystery to me. Oh, that's not too bad though. That's at least enough for the moon. But what's its rate of burn time? No, ten minutes max. And we'll try to use it J two style. Eight minutes. It'll complete orbit and then transfer. Uh, I'm forgetting to up the tech level on these. We will need some RCS tanks. Probably not that big. High pressure. Okay, well now what about first stage engines? We're not going to be using these, they're too small. Well, I mean, we need a second stage, probably. Maybe. Let's see. Or maybe we'll have a first stage with boosters? We don't have anything with more thrust than this right now. I haven't unlocked the very heavy rocketry. Well, even heavy rocketry, I don't think. It's gonna take a while to build this thing. But, again, we got the money, so we can add more upgrade points now. Well, first of all... We're going to end up with something like Falcon 9. Because uh, it's kerosene, oxygen, 910 kilonewtons, gas generator. What's the burn time on these? 7 minutes. So we're okay there, but we're not lifting off. So yes, we, we need boosters. Also, we need to upgrade our pad. Hmm. Well, instead of having this underutilized... Well, no, we'll, we'll just keep it the way it is. I was thinking of... But maybe we can make it lighter. I was thinking of making it smaller sized. Delta V-wise, we're fine with just the two stages. But we can't get off the ground right now. <laughs> uh, and we can't build it. It's just a little bit too heavy. Maybe... No, we're going to end up adding more mass for sure. Maybe the ticket is to move extra effort into this stage, make this wider, have two engines, and of course tilt them because we're liable to lose one. Oh yeah, things are poking out here. Okay, I think that's the best way to pack them in. That'll get us off the ground. 
And with the service module fuel, what we have is that much. So it's possible, it's a little bit dicey, but it looks like enough to do a, moon, a lunar flyby, not a lunar flyby. A lunar flyby. Actually got one stray engine there. Okay, so we've got 1.31 sea level thrust weight ratio. For some reason I have to tweak this up. The node is in the wrong place for this particular shell. I'll have to look into that too. Well, we've got 13 engines at the bottom of this. So I'm going to name this rocket Lucky. It's a lucky rocket. This is still Lynx Neo S. We have, for three crew, 18 days worth of supplies, it says. So that's fine. That's plenty enough for a uh, lunar flyby. We will not have crew in this, but we'll manage that when we, after we build it and when we launch it. So, yeah, this is our attempt at a launch to the moon, lunar flyby. I am going to build one. It's pretty expensive, but we now have money. Oh, editor's check, not available at the moment. I I swear we had that. Uh, I must have made a mistake. Oh, oh uh, it just needs the entry purchase again because I moved it or something maybe. Okay, hopefully it's okay now. Okay, when for some reason we're building more. Okay, so let's go outside and get some upgrade points. But we should get the docking mission together. That's probably easier because it's just a probe mission. Of course, right now this is just a test as well. Got three years for this, so let's not take more than one year to build it. Okay, well, that's under one year. Still, still a while though. We're gonna make the docking mission super simple. Going to... Uh, have these also be capable of helping us with comms, so I'll give him a decent amount of solar panel re right here. But not so that the RCS is blowing at those. These are the ones that stick straight out, they're not the 2x3s. No science needed, so that should work out pretty well. And then, uh, but we actually probably want RCS blocks, not like this, because it's gonna have to dock. We'll have two of these and they're both going to try their best <laughs> um, so yeah I just want a block oh but we don't really have small oh we do have small blocks here we go oh these are four Newton um, that might be more pain oh there's these conformal ones these are 100 Newtons as well but that's the same size as this so we'll just uh, Hmm. Maybe I'll just have two sets of the 40 Newton ones. Tilt these out so they're not blowing at the thing we're trying to dock with. And a propellant only docking port we find. Uh, that That's the propellant only docking port. Uh, this is the NASA docking system. Great. This is gonna be... Ah! Okay, we need to make this all bigger. <laughs> uh... Our docking systems just aren't that small. Well, it's completely covering the little core. We really don't need anything like full utilization of this tank. And we could probably skip a stage here. But we need to just make everything wider. One engine? Hmm. Well, we do have a lot of data units on it. The core itself should have the comms, UHF as usual, but let's just uh, make sure it's the best tech level and we'll give it 40 so I can communicate with all the things that it can. Got some backup batteries on this. Now it says we can build it in 9 days, but that's on the main slot where you're going to be using the second slot, but still this is plenty. We're clearly overdoing it, but I think it's okay. We'll just keep it. It's still the Serenity rocket.
which means these are the Reaver engines. So, okay, let's build two and see if we can get them to meet up with each other. Build time is 21 days on the second slot for these. Seems like a good thing. Oh, let's move up the space exploration one. Since we need that for stations, hopefully it'll help us. Now the contract just requires it to be above 150 kilometers, so that these probes could potentially help us with comms later on. We'll actually go higher. They have enough fuel, I think. And so that's the plan. We're not going for a tight orbit here. Okay, well, we can probably just place this in line with the moon. Might be the best thing to do. And for some reason all the mech jet windows are hidden. Okay, we should be launching in daylight like that. Okay. SAS on. That throttle's not working. Throttle up. Ignition. We have four engines. And go. Matching the moon's orbit doesn't matter. We do want to go pretty high up. And we'll go to that directly. We'll use the payload's fuel to circularize, but not to boost up after the fact. We are well past the speed of sound. Okay, very good. Staging. And this little engine is a go. Fairing set. So hopefully the shear strut engines now all have acceptable plumes. I mean, some tweaking could still be in the works, but acceptable plumes. Okay, let's get the little solar panels out. That trash part thing, I guess, is from USI. Better be careful, but that could be handy. A little bit cheaty depending on the situation though. Okay, well it would be nice if we could dump this stage. Okay, we'll go with 2,000 kilometers I think, and this stage will stay in the atmosphere like that. So that'll be good cleanup policy. Okay, RCS works, very important. And once we get to 2,000 kilometers we will circularize. Shouldn't be a problem that we're so high as far as the contract is concerned. These don't track. Well, at least they sort of extend. But yeah. It's in orbit. It would have been helpful if I had changed the orientation of these to be the other way around. For when we dock, now the solar panels will all be facing each other. But we'll probably undock them and get them into separate orbits after we do the docking contract so they can help with communication separately. Okay, well, that's sort of an ambitious docking target. Pretty high up. Not super high, but pretty high up. And let's just make sure that this is pointed at the sun, though obviously the sun is not visible right now, and we don't want to spin up. <laughs> Spinning up could cause problems for the docking, so Hmm... I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll spin up and then spin down, because it's not in a good situation right now. Okay, plenty of charging there. And alright. We'll wait a day and then launch the other one. Okay, I keep time warping too much. So we've actually waited three days. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. We have four engines, and go. Okay, pass the speed of sound. And we should be through max Q. All right, staging. We continue to look good, inclination is good. Go.
fairings. Okay, aiming for the same sort of idea that we had before. Let's get those solar panels out. So again, disposing of the stage here. Uh, it's getting a little bit higher than I wanted. Okay, but we'll take that. 82 kilometers, it's still in the atmosphere. Hopefully it'll get disposed of. Okay. We are free. Uh, but while I was paying attention to all that business with the apoapsis and periapsis, that let the inclination get a little bit wild. But let's see. Let's see what we've got here. It looks like that descending node is right at or close to our apoapsis. So let's just do that at the same time. So 200 and then 300, well we've got a thousand, so that's not a problem. Uh, saw some potential message. Stage destroyed. Okay, well stage destroyed is fine. Launch new vessel. Well, our periapsis is not above 150 yet, so that's okay. Okay, go. No, we seem to have a good rendezvous. At the closest approach distance there. Now, well, we're in the dark for now. Let's not worry about turning. But... Maybe I can carefully turn here? <laughs> Don't want to use too much RCS. Okay, target negative velocity. I should probably have started earlier. There it is. It's got to go past. Okay, corrected for the mistake and we are closing again. Okay, well, if ever there was a time for fine controls, I've pushed caps lock. Yes, we've got fine controls. Hopefully, the fuel consumption obeys that. <laughs> okay, kill rotation. I'll have this side actually do the docking. Somebody asked about the, the sort of low tolerances for docking in realism overhaul in general and in RP1 and RP2000 by extension. And one thing you should try to do is use smart ASS's negative parallel. Uh, this ensures that as long as you're controlling from the docking port and targeting the opposite docking port that the two will be facing each other. This means that you're parallel and it's opposite because you don't want to be parallel and facing the same direction. Uh, so right now the opposite docking port is facing this way and then uh, what you want to do is make sure that your prograde vector is opposite of the target vector as you're closing in. So it will shift, uh, this being here shifts the target vector towards your, your crosshairs. As you can see. Though it's not accurate until you get within 200 meters, where you can target the docking port, of course. But eventually, once it's there, you use your I, J, and K keys, I, J, K, and L, uh, to change the prograde vector so that it's more in line. But as you can see, because of the curvature of our orbits and Again, we haven't entered the range yet, nor targeted the opposite docking port. It's not accurate yet, but maybe I can target it now. I can't seem to. Okay, but let's just correct this a little bit. I'm trying to right click on there as much as possible, but it doesn't seem to be picking up anything. I don't, the root part isn't the docking port, so eventually I should target, it, target that. 
Well, I keep trying to right click on it, but it's not working. So we'll just continue getting closer. Oh, finally, I can set it as a target. There we go. So that might shift things a little bit. I generally approach at less than 0.2 meters per second. Other interesting things that you might want to have is this little dialog up here that will show your relative velocity with more precision than this does. And just keep everything in line. And SmartASS will be handling the rotational aspect of it by holding that negative parallel vector. So all you have to do is do the translation, which eases your workload. Or rotate a bit to stagger the solar panels. Okay, and docked. So there is still some magnetism with the docking ports, it's just not as much as in stock. Okay, so first docking is complete, and I wanted to get these into different orbits. So let's undock. Back this one away. Make sure it is spinning to the sun. Okay, and then this one. I'm just gonna do it quick and easy. I'm gonna boost it to a slightly higher orbit. Everything will be out of position eventually anyway. This engine I don't think throttles. So when it says current stage time, uh, a stage time current throttle, it's reading this throttle as if it's going from zero to a hundred, but it actually can't. It stays at one kilonewton. So that current throttle doesn't really read properly, uh, not with realism overhaul engines. So when which might have a completely different throttle range. So in the custom window editor down there, so that I don't get confused later. I'm gonna remove the current throttle and just go with the full throttle version. Stage time full throttle. Okay, anyway, this will be in a somewhat different orbit. It's a little bit higher up and will hopefully never actually collide with the other one, but uh, it is at the same height at one end or close to it. And we did first docking, and we have two commsats. Okay, back to Space Center. Now, I don't suppose this unlocks the... No, it's still... I don't know about that first space station contract. Maybe I should just rewrite that from scratch. Or maybe it's getting confused by that other uh, station crew repeater contract. There's also this new space station contract, but that requires you to have done the first space station one. So this is for a new space station. So, yeah, uh, I'll look into maybe, maybe I have to rewrite that one. I'm not sure. The other thing is, again, technically it does require this space exploration tech. So maybe I'll wait and see if that works out for us. And I do want to add te technology requirements to some of the other contracts because like for the ore one, you won't be able to get the ore without a drill. So anyway. Uh, I think I'll leave it here for this time. Next time we'll start off with sending the, true, uh, the two probes to Mars. Uh, we will also have, hopefully, that uh, lunar flyby test mission done. And we'll see about that, our largest rocket to date. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.